AM 1460, the new WXBR. You are listening to the Metro South Morning Show. Peter Zimborn, and Mike Pava here with you on a Thursday morning. Tonight at the Hampton Beach Casino in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, and Sunday at the Edding Center in Newport, Rhode Island. One of the more popular bands of the late 90s, early 2000s performs. Joining me right now is the lead singer of that band from Smash Mouth. It's Steve Harwell. Steve, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. How you doing, bud? I'm doing well, Steve. I want to just give you a heads up in case you were intending on playing some blackjack or roulette tonight. The Hampton Beach Casino where you're playing tonight is actually not a casino. It's a very misleading name. <laughs> well, I don't like to gamble too much. I, uh, I usually lose. Well, you know, th- that way you won't lose any money because you won't even try. <laughs> you guys are playing tonight with Sugar Ray, Fastball, and the Gin Blossoms. These are four bands who were amongst the biggest bands of the 1990s, all on one bill, and four bands that at different points in their career had number one singles. How did this tour come about? Well, actually, you also have Vertical Horizon on the tour, too, which is really great. But uh, the tour came about, Mark started it last year, and it was called the Summerland Tour. and uh, I wasn't able to be part of that tour at the time, and uh, so uh, after they changed the name to Under the Sun, and we kind of both agreed on what kind of, what bands we wanted to have out, so uh, I decided uh, it was the best time for us to get on board of this whole thing, and it's just been a blast to have, you know, the flow of Fastball, Vertical Horizon, Jim Blossom, Sugar Man, us, it's just it's it's such a great great tour and 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 the crowds have been incredible and, and the attendance and uh, it's just been a big party we've been having a blast every night. And you mentioned Mark that of course being Mark McGrath of Sugar Ray. What is the relationship between the two bands, Smash Mouth and Sugar Ray? Because you guys were dominating first rock radio and then top forty radio right around the same time in the late nineties. Yeah, you know we came up but we we we, we kind of hit at the same time. Our careers are really similar. Um, in that aspect of, you know, radio play and, and having the hits and uh, all the cool videos that we were making at the time. Because Mick G, who was Mark's best friend, <clears throat> at the time started out doing all of our videos. And and now he's a big-time movie director. But uh, it's just, uh, you know, Mark and I laugh about it all the time. And, and our first major tour was with uh, with, with, uh, with a Mark and Tour Grey guy. So that's how we met. And uh, we've become kind of... Uh, more of a family, I guess, than uh, than friends. You know, I mean, you know, I consider him like a brother, and uh, and he's uh, he's always been a big supporter of the of Smash Mouth. Once again, we're chatting with Steve Harwell of Smash Mouth here on AM 1460, the new WXBR. Smash Mouth is a band that has sort of had three different lives. You guys first dominated rock radio with Walking on the Sun, really crossed over to mainstream top 40 radio with the success of All Star in the late 90s. And now you guys are a band that has the name recognition where you can tour whenever you know when people are going to come out. But I have to imagine that the pressure isn't on you to replicate the success of any of your hits in the late 90s at this point. What's it like touring with Smash Mouth now? You're just enjoying life, enjoying the ride where it's taking you? Yeah, you know, this is our first major tour uh, in a long time. You know, we you know we play all year round, you know, as just, you know, just Smash Mouth. But when we were able to put this together... You know, this is what makes it fun to be able to get on your buses and travel the country. You know, when you have to do basically like a one-off show where you got to go through airports and fly here and fly there, that's the stuff that's not really up. You know, that's 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 the grueling side of it. But being able to be on the bus and be out here and just and go see all the you know just you know all these places we played before and uh, and it just makes it fun. And yeah, you know, for us personally. You know, we've had a lot of success, and now it's nice to be able to enjoy it kind of on your own time. And for us, you know, I wouldn't know what to do if I was sitting home without, you know, having music in my life. So I love being on the road, and I know all the other guys do too. So, yeah, it's it's nice to be able to go out there and not have to really, you know, rely on it constantly. But now it's become more – it's it's just funner now too. You know, growing up and, you know, we were – you know – you know, like early 20s when we started in this thing. And, you know, we did a lot of crazy stuff back then, you know. So anytime we made it through that. But uh, but now we can, you know, we go out and we really enjoy it. And we take our jobs serious, you know. We try every night to give the best show we can. And uh, so I think that's that's what the fans are going to get out of it. You know, our, our shows have just become so much better. And we've it's, you know, we just become a better fan. 
fan overall. You mentioned that you and Smash Mouth sort of hit, or you and Sugar Ray rather, hit around mm. the same time in the late 90s, and you guys toured together around that time. Now you guys are touring again in 2013. What's the difference between touring with them late 90s as opposed to 2013? I know you just mentioned you made it through some crazy stuff you did when you were early 20s. Yeah, you know, we just, uh, you know, Mark's got kids. You know, you know, Mark's married. A lot of guys out here have kids and are married. And, and you know, uh, you know, we've just gotten older and we've gotten better. And, uh, you know, I, I think we've gotten better with our age. And, uh, but yeah, coming up with Mark and the guys, it's just, it's just such a parallel between the two bands. I mean, you know, we talk about all the things we've been through, ups and downs and stuff like that. And, and Mark and I just, everything, it's like whenever I'll say something, I'm like, yeah, I remember that. He's like, dude, it happened to us too, you know. And, but uh, it's just a really cool, cool time in our lives right now to be on the road out here playing. And like, uh, you know, this tour, I think the fans and people that are coming out, they're just leaving with a smile. You know, after the show last night we had, uh, you know, the fans were just like, man, that was incredible. That was incredible. And I'm like, thank you so much. So it's just really working. And the gym blossoms are so good and fastball and vertical and, and you know, plus Mark and, and, and the guys. I mean, everybody's on their game and everybody's out here giving all they can, you know, for the fans, which I really, really enjoy. And I, I usually don't watch the shows, but uh, because it's been so much fun, you know, I'll go watch the band, you know, like off and on. I'll go to the side of the stage and check it out because the crowds are just going crazy. So it's really working out and we're going to keep it going for a long time. You mentioned that this is your first tour in quite some time. You guys do one-off shows year-round. What's the weirdest one-off show you guys have ever had to do? Oh, man. There's a lot of them. <laughs> we do a lot of corporate stuff. Those are usually fun. Um, I, you know, we've played private parties. We're really wealthy people, you know, bar mitzvahs and stuff like that. And it's like that's the oddest thing for me personally. It's like, you know, they're paying you so much money to come play, you know, for some kid <laughs> and all of his little buddies. And But, yeah, those are kind of the weirdest ones. Usually, you know, pretty, you know, pretty much all the shows we do, because we do play so much year-round, uh, not only corporate stuff, but just, you know, Smash Mouth shows here and there. But um, there's there are some weird ones I can't really talk about too much. Did you ever have to do the da 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 da, da at a bar mitzvah or anything? No, I would never do that. I don't. You couldn't pay me enough. Well, maybe you could pay me enough money <laughs> to do it. <laughs> Eccentric rich people have a way of getting people to do things. I've sure. Noticed. Oh yeah. Now in 2013, how often do you get recognized? Smash Mouth's a band that certainly stays in the public eye. Your music is used in a lot of commercials and movies. How often do you get recognized when you walk the streets? Uh, every day. I mean, pretty much, you know, airports and restaurants. It's, it's really funny. I always say this to people. It's like, it's like they almost see me coming. Like, I'll walk into a Chili's and the minute I open the door, I don't believe it comes on or something. <laughs> and it's like, I'll walk into like Macy's or something and can't get enough of you playing. It's like, oh, do you, I just turn around and leave. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, it's, uh, I still get recognized a lot. You know, I don't really try to dress the, dress the part every day. You know, I mean, I'm a baseball guy, you know, baseball hat and sunglasses when I'm cruising through the airports. But no, I don't mind it. You know, the fans are great. Um, we have a loyal following and, you know, and I try to accommodate everybody. You know, I had a Sharpie, a black Sharpie in my left pocket for 15 years, <laughs> it seems like, you know. So, but yeah, you know, I enjoy it. Um, it can get a little annoying sometimes. Um, but for the most part, everybody's really respectful. They just want to take a picture or have an autograph or just come say hi and, you know, and just, you know, kind of thank us for the music, which I really like. Makes you feel good. Once again, we're chatting with Steve Harwell of Smash Mouth here on AM 1460, the new WXBR. A few years back, 2006, more than a few years back, you were on VH1's reality show, The Surreal Life, where you lived in a house with Tawny Katayan, uh, C.C. DeVille of Poison. Uh, the mother from the Brady Bunch was a part of the cast. What are your memories from that experience? It was horrible. <laughs> okay. And I, and I should have never done it, and I regretted it. I mean, the minute I got on there, because uh, I... I think when, you know, they asked me to do it like four times, and I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. But then they kind of offered me a nice little chunk of change, and I said, yeah, I can go live there for, you know, it's like 12 days, 11 days. And CC and I became friends, and uh, but I think for the most part, 
the producers of the show kind of thought I was still the crazy partier Steve, and that's what they really want to get out of you. They they want you to make a fool of yourself, basically, and they want to, you know, showcase it. And I and I wouldn't do it, and it really pissed off the producers, and they were basically going to, you know, basically you not know, like kick me off the show, but they couldn't, you know. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to make a fool of myself on national TV. So um, I couldn't wait to get out of there. But once it was over, you know, I, I do keep in touch with CC, uh, like not as often as I used to, but, uh, you know, built a friendship there. So despite the exposure and the payday that came with that TV show, you regret the experience? Yeah, I do, actually, um, because it's just, it, it's just something I shouldn't have done. It's, it was a bad... It was a bad choice on my part, and, uh, you know, I just don't like to be exposed in that way, you know what I'm saying, because that's not me. I'm not going to go on there and start screaming and throwing temper tantrums and, you know, getting completely plastered on TV and, you know, fall down drunk, and, which a few people did. But, uh, yeah, you know, it was an experience, put it that way. I'll leave it at that. I often tell people that reality TV circa 2013 is apropos to pro wrestling in the 1980s. They want you to believe it's real, but they're blurring the lines between what is real and what oh, is fake. Time. How much of that show is actually real from what you saw on television? Um, on that show, for the most part, it's real because, you know, they're just following you around with the camera. They're not really setting scenes up, basically. I mean, they did have things that they wanted us to do and you know, kind of, you know, just kind of stupid stuff. But for the most part, you got a camera on you <clears throat> basically 24 hours a day. The only privacy you have is when you're in the bathroom, basically. And even then, they're listening, you know. But uh, it's, the only thing about that is, you know, three days into it, you basically forget that there is a camera there. I mean, they're, and they're right in your face half the time, but you basically just kind of forget. It becomes, you know, second nature to be having a camera around you. So, that's not the worst part of it. It's just the thing that they, it's when they edit it too, you know, a lot of that stuff. But, but there are so many reality shows out now that are just, they're so, they're so not real, you know. Do you have any other experiences with any other reality shows that I'm omitting? Um, no, no, not really. I haven't done a lot of that stuff, you know. I mean, uh, um, that's just, uh, I've had ideas for for a show or two here and there, and but it's not really reality. It's it's more like a I don't know, more like a I had a cooking show idea I've been working on, and <clears throat> just because I'm a total foodie, <clears throat> and being on the road, you know, with our cookbook recipe from the road that we put out, um, it's got a lot of interest, and a lot of my friends are in the business and chefs like Guy Fieri and all those guys. So, you know, you know, he's always said, you know, you got to do a show, do a show, so. I've got some ideas I'm tossing around, but for the most part, uh, through, you know, Surreal Life was basically the only reality show I, I've ever done. So you have proposed an idea to certain networks for you to do a cooking show that revolves around being on the road and being a rocker? Exactly. You know, it's basically me going around the restaurants and, and you know, whipping up some stuff with the chefs, and and it's, you know, kind of in, you know, include the music side of it, and, you know, just getting on the bus and, you know, we have some good ideas for it. We shot a sizzle reel for it. Came out really well. Pitching it to some networks. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with that. But right now, I'm so busy touring. I don't have time to even think about it right now. A lot of times when you talk to people that spend as much time on the road as you do with your band, they have certain restaurants in each city where they know they're going to each and every time. It sounds like you more or less just bring your own food and cook it as you go. Is that correct? Did you have your favorite restaurants from place to place as well? I've got my favorite restaurants, you know, and that's what we 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 went back to because the book is it's kind of a coffee table read you know we've got a lot of stories for a lot of the cities and it's also a scrapbook there's a lot of great photos from all over the years and, and you know different locations and stuff like that so it was really fun making the book and uh and i think people uh people that have been buying it you know have been you know given really good reviews about it and we sell it on the road too and so it's really cool i enjoyed it and and i want to do another one but uh this one took a while, but yeah, it, it was really fun, fun doing it.
Once again, we're chatting with Steve Harwell here on AM 1460, the new WXBR, performing with his band Smash Mouth tonight at Hampton Beach Casino in New Hampshire and Sunday in Newport, Rhode Island. Steve, will Smash Mouth be releasing any new music anytime soon? Yeah, probably next year. You know, right now we're just getting through the summer. You know, we're busy through the we're, uh, we just got back from Australia, and then we started this tour. It's just seven weeks. Then we're off for a few days, and we got a few more. Then we're off for a couple weeks, and then we going over to Asia, and, uh, Japan, and stuff like that. So, And we're also bringing Sugar Ray and Jim Blossoms on that run, too. So um, we're busy, and, you know, I'm not complaining. But, uh, you know, usually during the fall, around the Christmas time area, it gets slow for us. But for some reason this year, we're just, we're staying busy, which I really, I really enjoy because, you know, I'm, I'm not a downtime guy, you know, I usually do bad things when I'm off. So <laughs> I like to stay on the road. Smash Mouth's most recent releases have been on an independent record label, as opposed to the major labels you were on in the nineties and early two thousands. What's the difference between being on an independent record label and a major label? You know, uh, with major labels, because the industry's changed so much, you know, but for a band like us, you know, because we've had the success we've had, you almost don't need a major label. Um, and a lot of people are putting records out themselves because the labels are taking so much and record sales just aren't what they used to be. You know, everything's digital online. And, you know, so a lot of guys are just releasing it themselves because they have a little fan base. And uh, for us, we're making records because, you know, we love making records. But, uh, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just different. The industry's just, it's just almost not an industry anymore. It's, you know, it's become, it's become YouTube sensations, you know. So for us, I'm just like, hey, you know, let's make a record. We'll put it out, you know. Because, like I said, the re- you, you know, record sales have just, they've just diminished, you know. And people are downloading. And pretty much you can get music for free. So, uh, you know, why not do it yourself? We're chatting with Steve Harwell of Smash Mouth here on WXBR. Steve, you mentioned earlier that the correlation between your career and that of Sugar Ray's has been uh, very similar throughout the years. Mark McGrath in recent years has been doing a lot of TV hosting. Is that something mm-hmm. that you would consider doing? <clears throat> yeah, for sure. And I've been uh, and I've been asked to do it a lot. And uh, so I'll probably get into that a little bit next year, too. I really like it. I've done some of it, but uh, uh, I've, I've had a lot of people approach me to do it. I started doing a lot of voiceovers, too, recently. That's really fun. So uh, that's quick and easy, you know. Oh, I know that. Yeah. So uh, so I enjoy it. You know, I love TV. I want to do some more movie stuff, too. So just down the road a little bit, you know. Like I said, this year we're just concentrating on on this tour, it's just taking so much of our time up, you know, and we're doing a lot of shows in a row, so. What have you done voiceovers for that we would know of recently? Do what, buddy? What have, what voiceovers have you done recently that we may know of? Um, what did I do? I did something for Honda, did something for Polaris, uh, well, I think Home Depot or something recently, and, uh, I got a bunch more I gotta get done, actually, but I don't have, uh, I don't have my setup on the road, so I might have to jump into a studio here in the next week or two and knock them out. But it's fun. I enjoy it. Well, that's Steve Harwell of Smash Mouth joining us here on AM 1460, the new WXBR, playing Hampton Beach Casino in New Hampshire tonight, Sunday. They'll be in Newport, Rhode Island. Steve, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Any final words for our listeners before we let you go? Well, get your butts out to the show because it's going to be a fun one, and I want to thank everybody for uh, all the support over the years, and thank you guys for taking the time to play our music. We really appreciate it. That's Steve Harwell of Smash Mouth joining us here on AM 1460, the new WXBR in New Hampshire tonight. Newport on Sunday playing with Sugar Ray, Fastball, The Gin Blossoms, and Vertical Horizon. You're listening to the Metro South Morning Show. Peter Zimbor and Mike Pava here with you on a Thursday morning. We'll step aside for a quick break. When we return, Mike Pava joins us with a news update from the WXBR newsroom. Stick with us.